Good afternoon, my name is Camden and welcome or welcome back to my channel. It feels like it has been so long since I filmed a reading vlog and I feel a little bit out of practice, like I feel a little uncomfy in front of the camera, but that's not going to stop me. I'm going to power through. If you have been on my channel for a hot minute, you may have noticed that every couple of months I like to do kind of a themed reading vlog where I pick a topic or a trope or a subject matter and I read books about it for the entire week. First I did witch books back in September and then I did dark academia in October and in today's video I'm going to be reading all Greek mythology retellings. Greek mythology was a huge part of my life when I was a kid. I think when I was around seven or eight, I started learning a little bit about it in school. I remember learning about the story of Theseus and the Minotaur and writing a paper on it um, when I was in like first or second grade. And it's a love affair that has continued ever since. Um, I found this big old book of Greek myths at my local library and I would listen to that on audiobook like probably would get it out once a month or so and the stories are just something that I have really loved and treasured for my entire life so when they started coming out with these like retelling books a uh, couple of years ago I was stoked to see it so I have kind of a massive collection of them at this point because I just wanted to read them all and I haven't really gotten to read any of them so that's what we're going to be doing this week without further ado let me just hop into the books that we're going to be reading. Also, I would like to point out that I wore my Medusa sweatshirt for the occasion. Okay, so here are the books that I want to read this week. From left to right, we have Circe by Madeline Miller, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint, and Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. I did purchase a lot of Greek mythology retellings, but these are definitely the ones that I would say are probably the most popular out of the ones that have been released recently. Circe follows, obviously, the witch Circe. She is the character that turns men into pigs in the Odyssey when Odysseus visits her island. I really do love that piece of the Odyssey where he visits Circe's island, so I'm really, really excited to read a book that is from her perspective. Next we have Ariadne, and Ariadne is the character who falls in love with Theseus in the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. And then Song of Achilles follows the friendship and love affair between Achilles and his best friend Patroclus. Achilles is the Greek mythology figure who is dipped into one of the rivers of the underworld by his mother and she holds him by his heel so the majority of his body is immortal but there is a weak spot on his heel that is still immortal so it's the only place that can kill him and then Patroclus is his best friend and they are kind of heroes of the Trojan War. So I know that this book is so, so popular, especially like on Book Talk. I've seen it everywhere, and it's a lot of people's favorite book, so I'm really excited to read this one and see what all the hype is about. This afternoon I have some plans to go out with my husband and my brother-in-law. We're basically just going out for a long ride, and the boys want to stop at some stores. So I'm going to take Cersei with me to read in the car while we're out. So yeah, that's the plan for the afternoon, and I will give you an update once I have some on my progress on Cersei. First though, I'm going to make some breakfast because I am starving, and I'm sure my husband is as well. So let's get that out of the way first. This is Let's Talk About Myths, baby, and I am your host, Liv. The woman who has spent, oh my gosh, almost five years now rambling to you all about Greek mythology.
Mmm. You like it? I love it. <laughs> Good morning. I have a reading update for you guys. I am not super far into anything right now. But I feel like sometimes I don't always give enough updates throughout the reading process. So I wanted to kind of give some initial thoughts on both of the books I started. So right now I... I have Cersei very lazily propped up next to me. I'm about 50 pages into the book right now and I'm really liking it so far. We have not hit on any type of like inciting incident in this story that set off the plot just yet but I can feel that it's going to be coming up pretty soon. Um, so right now we're just kind of getting introduced to Cersei, who she is in mythology. She is the daughter of Helios and Percy, who is a daughter of Oceanus. So Percy and Cersei, <laughs> where I'm at in the story, she's just kind of befriended a mortal fisherman and you can tell that she kind of has a crush on him and he has opened her eyes to like what life is like outside of, um, her father's palace and she's very very intrigued by him and his life and all this stuff so they're getting to know each other really well and obviously she's developing feelings for him so i know that the catalyst to cersei being like exiled to her island is her like using magic in a way that threatens the gods so i'm assuming that possibly um, she will be using magic to get this guy to fall in love with her or something like that. I'm not really sure, um, but that should be coming up shortly, so we will know soon. So, yeah, that's pretty much that on that. I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying this, like, refresher into Greek mythology, already, like, meeting, like, Prometheus and stuff. I was very, like, oh, hey, like, I, I know you. It's always just fun like meeting characters that you remember so anyway that is that on Cersei. The next one that I started is Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. I found this one on audiobook on Scribd so I've been listening to that. I'm about 15% of the way through this one and something interesting that I absolutely did not remember or possibly never knew is that Ariadne is actually Cersei's niece. Ariadne's mother is Pasiphae and Pasiphae is in Circe because she is Circe's sister. So that was a really interesting, like when I started the book, I was like, besides that, the most surprising thing so far in Ariadne is that we're like 15% of the way into the book and it feels like the Minotaur storyline is like almost played out. <laughs> like we're like, rushing right along in the Minotaur storyline and I really thought that that was going to be the entirety of the book. So apparently I really don't know anything about Ariadne besides her part in the story of Theseus and the Minotaur. Anyway, I am interested to see how this plays out and I think it's really cool that she's going to be like not just the side character perspective in somebody else's story but it looks like she has a whole story of her own that I don't know so I'm really interested to see where that leads us and see a kick-ass female main character in Greek mythology so yeah anyway that is pretty much the reading update as for my life and my life update um today is Sunday and Sunday is date day for me and Ali Every so often we like to do what we call a blind date where one of us will plan an entire date without telling the other one where it's going to be, the location, what we're doing, etc, etc, etc. And today I have planned a blind date for Ali. So <laughs> I've planned it based around his interests as a good wife would do. I'm taking him to a bakery because man's got a sweet tooth unlike any other. And then I'm taking him to a little goat farm where you can pet the goats. He really loves animals and he also really loves cuddling animals. So I feel like this is going to be a fun time for both of us. And then if we have time, I'm going to take him to like a little walking, hiking trail nearby as well um, to check that out. So should be a fun day. I'm hoping he really likes it. I think the goats is going to be popular, so 
I obviously don't want to be like recording our whole day and like stuff like that but I definitely want to get some footage of the goats so I'll try and insert that in next so anyway I'm heading out but I will see you guys with another reading update soon <laughs> oh, he coughed. Mm -hmm. That was so cute. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> We got another few inches of snow last night. Good morning. If you watched my A New Year of Reading video from a couple of weeks ago, you'll know that one of my resolutions for the year was to set aside some time every day for myself to read uninterrupted. I'm testing out different times of day, whether I want that to be in the evening or the afternoon or in the morning. So I'm gonna try reading for like an hour this morning and see if I can get myself to focus. I've noticed that I have this problem where I either become like hyper fixated on reading and then I have a hard time doing anything else or I'm always getting distracted while I'm reading so I go from like reading and then suddenly I like realize that I have been scrolling on my phone for a while and like kind of didn't realize it and just a vicious cycle of like trying to read but getting distracted or needing to do other things and getting distracted by reading so <laughs> i'm not sure how to fix this problem but what i am going to do this morning is just set an alarm for myself for like an hour and i'm gonna make myself some tea and i'm going to sit in my cozy reading chair and i'm just gonna do my best to focus and enjoy myself so I'm going to try reading more of Cersei because I'm only 50 pages in at this point still. So anyway, I'm going to go make myself something to drink and then we'll get to reading. Hello! Today is Saturday, which means it has been several days since I last updated the vlog. I do apologize about that. Unfortunately, it's just been a busy week at work, and also school started this past week, so I've been occupied with that. I have three classes this semester, so almost a full workload. Fortunately, though, I did continue reading, so I have a reading update for you. I finished Ariadne by Jennifer Saint yesterday and I have some thoughts for you on the book. Let me start off by saying I do think I will be giving this one a four-star rating. 
I'm a little bit between a three and a four, but I think I'm going to go with four. This is a very interesting character driven novel. You are following not only Ariadne, but around the 30% mark, we start following her younger sister Phaedra as well. As much as I love like short slice of life books that take place over like a few hours or a few days, I also really enjoy books like this one that take place over the course of like 10 or 15 years because you get to watch the characters go through like this massive growth and completely change their perspectives on things in a way that feels realistic and feels believable. You get to watch them go through different life stages, you get to watch them go from content to unhappy to having this massive like revelation that completely changes their viewpoints and it's just the perfect scenario to have like this deep dive into the characters perspective and viewpoint and I really enjoyed that aspect of this book. However, I can totally understand that this book would not be for everyone. This is one that I would only recommend to like a select few people because most people enjoy having kind of like an outside plot moving the story along like events in the world, quests that needs to be completed, stuff like that. And the pace of this book is really only driven by like the characters changing motives and like changing stages of life. Not a lot really happens in this book. It's pretty slow paced and slow burning. So if that's not for you, if you would rather have a plot focused book than a character focused book, I wouldn't recommend this one to you. I also definitely feel like if I didn't already enjoy Greek mythology, I didn't already have some familiarity with these characters, and I didn't already like have a pre-existing interest in their story, that this book would not have been as successful for me as it was. I just feel like the Greek mythology aspect carried me through a lot of the slow parts where I might have DNF'd if I didn't already care about these characters prior to reading this book. So if you're not a fan of Greek mythology, you might not like this book as much as I did. So anyway, that's pretty much my thoughts on it. I am going on a quick library mission and I am going to bring you with me. So let's go. Hello. I did not get a chance to show you what it was that I got from the library yesterday, but I have it with me now. I picked up Dulaire's Book of Greek Myths. This is the book that I was telling you guys about earlier in the video that I used to get out like every month or so. Um, so now that I've finished both Ariadne and Circe, I'm very excited to look up those myths in this book and see how the books compare to the original, even though I'm sure that the characters are not super prominent in those myths, I'm still interested to see. So if any of you read this when you were kids as well, do let me know in the comments because I would definitely be interested to know that we shared that piece of our childhoods. Unfortunately, I am not going to get to read Song of Achilles in this video. I'm cutting it pretty close and I need to get to editing and uploading this video. But if you guys like this one, I can make a part two because there are tons of other Greek myths that I'm really interested in getting to. I'll put some of them on the screen for you to peruse through and you can let me know which ones you'd like to see me read and review. But back to Circe. I did really enjoy this book. I thought it had significantly more plot than Ariadne did. I would say throughout the course of the book we're probably following like four or five different subplots that have a beginning, middle, and end throughout this book. And obviously with Circe being like an immortal goddess, we're following her over quite a span of time of like thousands of years. I like that Circe was not a perfect character by any means but she did have quite a strong moral compass that she follows and expects others to follow throughout the course of the book 
There are parts where she's expecting Odysseus and her sister to behave better than they are, and I thought that that was really good out of a narrator, and especially a Greek goddess. <laughs> we don't see that a lot, where they're trying to encourage people to be better and think more of other people's lives and not think of them as disposable bodies. So I really liked that about her character. I also really enjoyed Odysseus's part in the book. I thought that seeing him through her eyes was really, really interesting. She had a lot of fondness for him, but she could still acknowledge a lot of his flaws and um, areas of weakness, and I thought that was really good. And I just found Odysseus to be a lot more likable from Circe's perspective than I remember him being in his own myth where he's kind of braggy and arrogant at times. Circe's choice in lover at the end was a little concerning to me. If you've read the book, you know. If you haven't, I'm not going to spoil it. But it was a little weird. Not gonna lie, although we've definitely seen more problematic behavior from other Greek gods. So, I guess in the grand scheme, Zeus marrying his sister. So, anyway. <laughs> My only real critique of the book is that I felt it dragged in certain areas, especially when we're moving from one major plot line to another, there would be like a cool down period in between. And those parts of the book could definitely drag and feel like they weighed down the story a lot. If I were to give it an accurate rating, I would probably give it like a 4.5, but since I don't really give out half stars anymore, I'm just gonna round it up to five, but just now I did think that there were parts of the book that were a little boring. And if you are as quick to lose interest as I am, you may struggle. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video. If you made it all the way to the end, you are a real one. You can feel free to like this video comment, subscribe if you're not already, and I will see you next week. Bye!